Okay, this excerpt is called The Birthday Party. It says, in her autobiography, Outside the Magic Circle, white southerner Virginia Foster Durr recalls how the customs of the Jim Crow South affected her seventh birthday party. So right away when I read Jim Crow South, I know that this story took place in the between like the 1940s to the 1960s maybe. Um, when I think of Jim Crow South, I think of the movie The Help and the book The Help. That's that period of time where they said it was okay for people to have separate water fountains, that the blacks had to stay with the black people and the whites had to stay with the white people. So this is an excerpt called The Birthday Party. During the summer of Aunt May's visit, she heard the little black children in the backyard calling my sister, Sis. My brother called her Sis, and I called her sister. Well, Aunt May sent grandmother's house servant, Easter, out to tell the black children they couldn't call Josephine, Sis. They had to call her Miss Josephine. We were astonished and hurt and didn't know what this was all about. Her here, sister, who had been playing with the black children all her life, had to be called Miss Josephine all of a sudden. But sister solved the problem by telling them, now you don't have to call me Miss Josephine, you just call me Miss Sis. So after that, all the children, white and black, called her Miss Sis. She solved the problem by not hurting anybody's feelings. She spent her life doing that. The incident was a warning that our idyllic days were over, but the great trauma of my early life came with my seventh birthday. I had already, well, I had always celebrated my birthday in Union Springs because it was in August. We would have a barbecue in the backyard with the black children. We would dig a pit in the backyard, which was sandy, and place a grill over the hole and build a fire. Then the cook would give us chickens, which we were allowed to baste and turn. But on my seventh birthday, my mother and grandmother and aunts all said I had to have my birthday in the front yard and have just white children. No black children could come to my party. Well, I got very angry about that. So I've read the first two passages first two paragraphs and I know that this is an excerpt from a person who is white who hangs out with black um, people who when she's not supposed to I know that because she's getting in trouble from her aunt May for not being called miss by the black children in the opening of the excerpt and then here in the second paragraph it says um she was supposed to have a birthday party and she'd always had it with um, the black children and the white children together. And now she's being told that she had to have the birthday with white people in the front of her yard. And I know that when she uses the word I, it's Virginia Foster Durer because it's her autobiography. And autobiography is a story of your life written by you. If you do something auto, that means you're doing it yourself. Paragraph three. I had been planning the party for months. I had had typhoid fever and had spent the whole time that I was ill planning my birthday party. I was going to have a pink cake and pink slippers and pink socks and a pink dress and a pink sash and a pink bow and my hair and a pink and strawberry ice cream. When August arrived, I had a pink dress, the pink socks, the pink everything except the strawberries, which weren't available in August but I was told none of the black children could come to the party. Only white children, perfect strangers they had picked up in Union Springs. So I had a temper fit early that morning, and they finally agreed that I could have the barbecue in the morning and the party in the afternoon. The barbecue would be in the backyard with the black children, and the party would be in the front yard with the white children. We had the birthday party, and everything was going fine. One of the little black girls was tearing up the chicken, and she offered a piece to Elizabeth. Elizabeth, who must have felt like an outcast in this group, all of a sudden said, Don't you give me any chicken out of that black hand of yours. I'm not going to eat chicken that your black hand has just touched, you little inward. I told Elizabeth to go to hell. I was just furious. You see, the black girl was Nursie's little girl, Sarah. She and I had played together all the time. I was raised with her. The grown-ups put me to bed and said I was going to hell for being so bad. So the narrator of this story just told 
this girl Elizabeth to go to hell because Elizabeth was yelling at a little black girl who tried to hand torn pieces of chicken to her, Elizabeth. So the narrator's not racist, but her her neighborhood and the people at her birthday party who are white are. When the afternoon came, I went to my birthday party with all these strange white children. I had another temper fit and screamed and yelled. I bashed the cake in and was put to bed again. By that time, the seventh birthday was pretty well shot, cake and all. Okay, so the ending of the story, basically the seven-year-old Virginia Foster Durr gets in trouble again for having another temper fit. But actually, a lot of these fits are good that she's having because she's not being bad. She's being the only right one in the group because she doesn't want to have two separate parties. She wants to party with the black children that she's been, um, gr that she's been growing up with the children who are her friends. It makes me think of that poster that you see where there's an African-American baby and a white baby holding hands. And it like says, you know, only racism can be taught. And, and it, it's just the whole idea that when you're born, you're not told who to love, who to hang out with. It's just when parents and society starts to tell you. So um, that's what the birthday party is about. And now you've got to go ahead and do and answer the questions over the birthday party, which are right here. Um, and that's it.